On the menu today. Actually, quite emotional. Oh, this is kind of. Welcome. No, not that either. Oh, hello, Chip Dippers. Welcome to Retro Recipes. So recently, I acquired this broken and dusty 1977 revision to Sears Telegames version of the Atari VCS, and we refurbished it to look like new. And we upgraded several components, including converting it from fuzzy old RF to higher quality composite video. And I did all of that in the hope of righting a wrong that happened to me 37 years ago. Hey! Hello. My name's Lady Fractic, and I'm on vacation from California. Wow, cool. Wow, cool. Mom, can you buy me an Atari? You see, the game box didn't say for the Atari VCS. It simply says for Atari and Sears video game systems. And so we bought an Atari 400 because that is an Atari video game system. Well, no, turns out it wasn't. Uh, but there's only one problem with all the work I've done to try and get this VCS working. It still don't bloody work. <laughs> so onwards and upwards, hopefully to space and the evil galactic empire, the first thing I've done is acquire this very fittingly named Darth Vader edition of the VCS, which is going to allow us to swap some chips with my broken one and see if that solves our problem. And suspect number one is the Television Interface Adapter, or TIA chip. So let's swap it with a new one and see if we can get a picture. Vader transplant is done. Let's turn it on. Fingers crossed, everyone. <laughs> yes. However, it is in black and white. All right, let's let's try and get some color out of this. So originally I'd installed the composite cable in resistor 216, but I was told by the person who made this mod that 216 was incorrect because their instructions applied to the light sixer, not this heavy sixer. So I reinstated that one and was told to remove resistor 215 instead and patch the video in there. But I've now been told that actually the way I did it originally in R216 might have been correct. So I'm going to try moving that over and see if it brings the colour back. Look, I can move on my own. Okay, deep breath. 
How did you do that? Come on, 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 does make the interference kind of come and go. But then even lifting the board up and down does the same thing, has this weird effect. So I don't want to blame the composite mod. I am told that different TVs can have a different effect. So let's try it on a good old CRT screen, see if it's any better. And... Uh, unfortunately not. So I've been talking to the ever helpful Luke at Console 5 and on the Atari Age forums, and the consensus is that there are two different interference patterns. The slow rolling bars look like 60 Hz mains power hum. Now I've tried different outlets all around the house, and even a second new power supply from Console 5 with no change. It could also be radio frequency interference coming in on a bad solder joint or even through the video wires. That other stationary interference is digital, possibly from one of the chips. And it's Luke to the rescue again. But not Luke Skywalker. That's impossible! I mean Luke from Console 5, who's sending me some new chips to try. Fry. Try. <clears throat> and if you've unfortunately fried one of your PCBs and need a new one, well, Frank Sinatra did it his way, but I like to do it PCB way! Because as we all know, PCB stands for printed composite board, doesn't it? So with the new chip in the post, let's try just temporarily replacing the composite cable in the mod, just in case we've got a faulty wire there. And sadly, still no change. Hmm. Next, let's try reflowing all the solder in all of the chip's joints, starting with this, the TIA, and see if we maybe had a bad solder joint causing the issues. But guess what? No change. So the next thing I want to do is this modification in the original VCS service manual. It talks about a static modification, uh, actually on the joystick ports, but I mean, we're running out of things to try and I just want to see if this makes a difference. So we remove these two old capacitors, one on each joystick port, and then we're going to add this diode into the equation. We're going to place it over a new capacitor and solder it in place. And because the diode only allows travel in one direction, good band, it should block any static coming from the joystick ports. So let's give it a go. So I've done the same on the other joystick port. Here we go. And no change. Yeah. Well, the next thing I think we should turn our attention to is this ribbon cable that joins the switchboard above to the main PCB below. Now, I've been ignoring it until now because I checked all the continuity and it was getting good continuity from each end of the cable and there was no short circuits happening because when you pull the ribbon cable straight and flat, no wires touch each other. But I think it served its purpose over the 44 years. So let's put it on Facebook Marketplace. <coughs> yeah, and replace it with a shiny new DuPont cable. Now I had no idea that the standard spacing actually has stayed the same since the 60s. So uh, I didn't expect that a DuPont cable and some pin headers would work, but seems like they will. So let's get it installed.
<laughs> well, would you Adam and Eve it? I would say that is much better. But we have still got some interference, but I won't be beaten on this. So let's also try tidying up my voltage regulator repair with thinner wires and a new heatsink. But no improvement. Well, there's still a couple of final things we can try. Now you might have noticed that the Veda had this copper tape grounding all the switches to the RF shield, whereas our older Heavy Sixer didn't. Now I'm pretty sure the switches are grounded either way, but let's try adding some and see if that brings the interference down a bit. And... <laughs> nope. Now our early VCS has one other little oddity, this 4050 buffer chip absent from most later machines. And Luke told me that the video luminance signal actually passes through it, and he's seen it cause video problems in other machines. So he kindly sent me a spare to try out. May the force be with us, Luke. Oh, this is kind of I guess the force is not with me. Poodoo. Now, don't get me wrong, the picture isn't terrible for a 44-year-old machine, but I'd really love to solve that interference and stop these wires making such a difference to the picture. Now, as you can see, I had tried a little experiment by permanently squeezing the wires together with these cable ties, as it seemed that when they were loose, they might have been acting as a RF antenna, literally picking up interference signals. But now I'm just going to trash those wires completely and install all new ones. Put that on Fleabay. <coughs> oh, sorry, Wilhelm. That's our cat. Now I've forgotten what wires go where. Uh, luckily I was able to buy this back off Fleabay and uh, I can now see that it is ground, five volts, audio and composite video. Phew. And no, these aren't my dentures. It's a 3D printed wire holder. Pretty handy for doing little jobs like this. So let's solder all those wires on, give it another try. got to say that is even better than before. We've still got a bit of that interference creeping up the screen slowly, but there's less of it. Mario seems a bit sharper. And most interesting of all, when I squeeze the wires, this time nothing happens. And here's a quick reminder of how things looked when we first got the video working, just as a comparison to now, which is this. And when the background colors cycle like this, even they look much less interfered with than before. So I'm gonna say that this unit had a faulty wire. I mean, it's kind of incredible. This machine is 44 years old and it's the brand new component that's to blame. Now, I don't blame the manufacturer. This damage could have happened during transit or while I was installing the wires several weeks ago. So that's not a problem. But what is, is this interference still creeping up the screen? And putting the VCS in its new home, it's even more noticeable now on the big screen. So assuming that's 60 Hertz mains power hum, I'm trying no less than three new power supplies and no change. I'm also trying different outlets all around the house to no avail. But as a last resort, I'm gonna try just one more over here. Yes! So this old hardware was obviously susceptible to something else that's plugged in. Hardly surprising really with this much retro goodness. Yep, I'm a very lucky boy indeed. 
So knowing that it is mains power interference, I've added these three ferrite cores to the mains power wire and double yay, we are 100% complete. You see, ferrite is a ceramic type material that has magnetic light properties that choke interference. Very appropriate for Lord Vader. <clears throat> ah, such a relief. Which means it's now time to play The Empire Strikes Back. Ooh, exciting! Now I can remember picking this up. I know I did a kind of fun reconstruction, but I distinctly remember something about that Parker Brothers logo, the silver box, and just the fact that it was Empire Strikes Back. This box promised a whole world, a whole galaxy uh, of entertainment and escapism. And I guess because I was used to the Parker Brothers logo from board games and stuff, I had, that's part of why I just wanted this so much. And yeah, it's never sat right with me that I, I never got to play it. <laughs> I'm actually quite emotional. I've got a VCS in front of me for the first time. I have to try and really transport myself back to being 10, 11 years old. And, Pretend that that story went right, <laughs> instead of us getting the wrong computer, uh, because Atari weren't very clear about it on the box. But forgive and forget, hey? It's only been 37 years. never opened this instruction book either. I'm gonna just, if it's okay, I'm gonna pretend that you're one of my friends when I was 10, maybe Matty Fractic or Jamie Fractic, and we're playing this game together. So it says, the object of the game is to destroy as many of the Imperial Walkers as you can before they reach the power generator at the end of the battlefield, or before the Imperial Walkers destroy your fleet of snow speeders. It takes 48 hits to the body to destroy an Imperial Walker. You can fly around the back of a Walker and attack from the rear. How rude. There is a quicker way to destroy an Imperial Walker by firing a missile into a bomb hatch. Land a damaged snowspeeder in a valley and within a second it's repaired. Cool. If you keep your snowspeeder alive for two minutes, the Force will be with you. Your snowspeeder will be begin flashing You'll hear the Rebels theme song. Wow, I didn't know it had music. The Force will be with you for 20 seconds, and you're then all powerful. Thought I was a Jedi, not an Imperial. Game ends when the lead Imperial Walker reaches the power gener generator, or when, so I'm still excited, or when your last of your snow speeders is destroyed. There are 32 game variations, including two player games. Wow, I wonder who we could invite later. Fabled cartridge. I do hope it works because obviously I haven't tested it. Here it goes, nothing. Just gonna turn it on. on screen until we start the game by pulling down reset. I'm going to set the skill level to novice. There we go. Oh, you can hear the walker coming. Oh man, that is... Where is it? Okay. This is way cooler than I thought it would be. Oh, I died. Okay. I got cocky. Cock and cock. 
We got one. <laughs> I'm as excited as wet amphibians. Oh, I should be landing my snow speeder to, uh, to repair it. Let's try landing in the valley. Nice, okay. really hard to shoot. Okay, we got him. Whew. Man, I love this game. I was worried it was going to be a little bit pants. Well, I'm a little bit pants. I just died again. Oh, and I can hold fire. That's handy. Come on, lead water. I'm going to get you. Oh yeah. What does that mean? Come on. The force is with me. Yes. First game over. Wow, I am. Um, I was really worried after all this work we've done that this game actually wouldn't deliver and would just be like a really basic blocky thing. But it's actually got substance to it. You you can you can get the force. Uh, you can repair your ship. There's bomb hatches, which I didn't manage to hit on this first game. I am I am so happy. Oh. Well. I can't keep playing this forever in this video because uh, it's long enough as it is. Um, now, obviously, by today's standards, it's, it's not 3D graphics and you know VR and 4K, but I'm seeing this through my usual eyes, which is those of a 10-year-old, because I work with these computers all the time, so I understand, as you do, I'm sure, how cool this would have been in 1983 when you were 10 years old. Uh, so I have no regrets about this game. Um, my only regret is that it did take me 37 years to play it. <sighs> well, that's life. Oh, and just a word about that flickering every time I pressed fire. Apparently it's uncommon, but something to do with this particular game doing unconventional things with the scan lines to achieve certain effects, which causes a brief loss of vertical sync on my old CRT screen. But the good news is, in its final home, connected to my big screen, it doesn't happen at all. So the force is finally with us. Uh, I think in a second, as the credits roll, we'll invite Lady Fractic in for a two-player mission of this game. But other than that, I just want to say thanks so much for joining me on this journey. Uh, it's been great having you here as friends, playing it with me. Until next time, subscribe and join below. And cheerio. Lady Fractic is on. She's that off. <laughs> that was my turn now. Why does it look like he's farting? Maybe he is. All right, you're on. Come on, seven of nine. Yes. It's actually a benefit to landing. Then you can just shoot without flying. Ah, Lady Skywalker. Ray? Yes. It will do the music for you. <laughs>